Hello and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper and today we need to talk about whether or not an engine is numbers matching. When I bought this 1967 Mustang, the previous owner told me that this was the original engine that had been rebuilt as well as the original transmission. I didn't really believe that because this car is old enough that it's very unlikely that it would have the original components. When cars are new, they have a very high value that depreciates very rapidly. Then they spend a lot of their life at a very low value, almost worthless, before reappreciating unless they started life as a very limited or very exotic vehicle. In dealing with a car like the Mustang, it would be very unlikely somebody would spend a lot of money to preserve the original 289 in the car, rebuild it year over year, and not have just simply replaced it with some cheaper solution like a junkyard engine. Now we can determine this very quickly now that it's out of the car by looking at the stampings on the block. In the case of this engine in particular, the stampings are on the lower passenger side. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we're working with. With the engine on the stand, it's much easier to identify the stampings on the block. Here we are on the passenger side of the engine and the stampings we are looking for are underneath the exhaust manifold up here on the side of the block. If this were in the car with your strut tower and your starter and everything in the way, it'd be almost impossible to easily see. But with it out of the car, we can dig into it. On a more modern car, you may have an entire VIN inscribed on the engine, but on these old engines, you had a combination of letters and numbers that told you when the engine was made and sometimes what the application was, the specific type of vehicle it was going into, but not the specific car. So in this case, what we will be looking for is, is it the right year for the car and was it for a Mustang? So let's go ahead and rotate the engine and see what it is. So now that we're looking up from the lower passenger side of the engine, we can take a look at these casting numbers on the block. So as you can see, there are two rows of letters and numbers. The upper set is the date stamping for the block. The lower set is the inscription giving more details about the block size itself, as well as the application. So first thing we see is 5H18 in the upper block. That tells us that this engine was made in 1965 and what month and day it was made in. If it's made in 1965, it probably wasn't for a 1967 Mustang. On the next row, we can see that it says C5AE with additional information. C denotes that it is a 1960s engine, that it's from that decade. So that's correct. Unfortunately, it then says five, which says it's a 1965 engine, which is entirely not correct for a 1967 car. Additionally, it shows A and E. The E is an engineering number, the A is a denotion of the car. In this case, the code A denotes a galaxy as the car it was intended to be in, whereas if this was a Mustang engine, it would have a Z in its place. The second half, 6015E denotes the displacement, stating that this is a 289 small block. Now that we have decoded the block stampings, we know for certain that this is not the original engine for this car. I don't feel too bad about it, other than the fact that somebody went out of their way to tell me that it was, because I'm not going to be restoring this car back to original anyway. So now that I know all of this, I will go ahead and probably do a quick rebuild on this engine, put a few beefier parts in it. I have a couple turbos sitting on the shelf. I wouldn't mind bolting to something and this seems like a good candidate. It'll probably find its way into a future project of something stupid, but I'm not gonna worry about preserving it for restoration purposes. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.